My name is Pete Woods. You're watching Hexham TV. Who are you? I'm Sue Reed, <laughs> local author and writer of a new book, The Rewilding of Molly McFlynn. So, Sue, is this your first book? Yes, it is, Pete. Yes, it is my first book. Um, I found out that at, uh, you can get a student loan up to the age of 60. So at 58, I gave up my little business that I used to have, the Woolly Peddler, and I went off to Newcastle University to do the MA in creative writing. And this is the result. Yes, my first book. That's amazing. So um, firstly, how did you find the course? I just, I knew that I wanted to go locally because, you know, obviously living, I live just west of Hexham. I didn't want to travel far. And so it was a toss up between Newcastle University or Northumbria. So I went and looked at both, um, looked at both open days and thought the Newcastle course suited me better. They had a life writing module and um, that I was particularly keen to do. I went there thinking I was going to write my memoir and came out writing a book um, for young adults instead. So why did you choose the young adult genre? Yeah, I, ha I had a fantastic lecturer, Anne Coburn, uh, really enjoyed the module. And um, the character of Molly was birthed during this uh, course. And then it just went from there, really. I've always had a massive interest in sustainability and nature. Um, it snowballed from there, really. And then when I, and I did that for my dissertation, I did a, the first act of it, so the first act called Hair Moon. And then afterwards, um, Anne, the, the lecturer, carried on working with me and became my writing mentor. And we worked That's for nice. a couple of years all through lockdown as well to to get this finished yes um covid um had a massive impact on um writers didn't it and, Huge. and students because yeah. i was a student i i started in the september um up at newcastle absolutely loved going up i put my student land round. i've got it yeah here it is I keep it as a, as a memento. My student lanyard round my neck, swanning through town. I'm a student again. Um, up through those iconic arches, through the quadrangle. Absolutely love that. Um, was making some good friends. Enjoyed the student bar. And um, then lo and behold, lockdown happens. And we'd had a term and a half of lectures. And then wallop everything. Well, everything stopped to start with. I wouldn't say everything went online. Everything stopped. Um, while people scrabbled around the, the IT department, the lecturers, to try and work out how they were going to now deliver courses. Zoom wasn't really a thing at that point. Um, so we had, it was sort of like prairie, prairie dust for a while. And then we picked up again um, and lectures went online, but it, it wasn't the experience that I'd signed up for. And um, I think as a mature student, I've already got a degree. I did my teaching degree back in 1981, long time ago, probably before a lot of your listeners were born. Um, so I'd had the student experience. I'd gone wild at college in London. And I, okay, this was disappointing for me, but it wasn't a disaster. But for those kids that have just left home, the 19-year-olds, yeah. I can't imagine moving back into my parents' home, having had a taste of uni life. It must have been awful for them. Mm, very tough. Very but it tough. gave me, it also, lockdown also gave me um, the chance to really sit at writing every morning. Um, there was nothing else to do. So every morning I would get up and I'd work on my novel. So for, for that reason, it was fantastic. So tell me a little bit about the book. Okay. Okay. I'm going to flash it again because I'm just dead proud of it. The Rewilding of Molly McFlynn. So Molly's 15. And she's living in town in Heaton in a flat with her mum. Her mum's a nurse at the RVI. Um, Molly's being caught, I'll give you one spoiler. Molly's being caught shoplifting um, from H&M in town. Uh, mum's not happy. She says Molly can't be trusted. And Molly's sent to live with her bohemian grandparents in the wilds of Northumberland, um, down a muddy lane 
the Wi-Fi is non-existent, the food's inedible, the land's into foraging and growing her own stuff. Um, her friends have abandoned her and her nan's doing weird things in the garden at night. So look, Molly's dead unsettled, she's not happy. She stomps off frequently with the dog on walks. And on one of these walks, um, I've actually set it in Beltingham Nature Reserve by the Green Bridge. Um, one of these walks, she meets a girl who's homeless. The girl's on the run. It turns out that the girl's on the run from the witch finder in 1649, um, who's banged her mother, Anne Watson, in the jail in Newcastle. Now, mm -hmm. Anne Watson was a real person. Anne Watson was one of the 15 women and one man hung on the town moor in 1650 on accusations of witchcraft. Uh, we don't know much about Anne. Um, all, all the records tell us that was she was tried for being a witch, spelt W-Y-C-H in 17th century type. And as with so many, particularly women in history, um, their stories are buried. So it's a story of true friendship, how Molly and Martha become really good friends. It's a story of reinvention, how Molly changes from her sort of town life consumerist life and really through nan and granddad and and martha and their life develops a love of nature an understanding of um what sustainability is and it's about breaking free of expectations sort of finding your tribe she finds her tribe of people um she rewilds herself both on a personal level and on an environmental level it's, and it's the first of a series. I'm hoping that in this one she's rewilded, but in future series she'll come sort of the Greta Thunberg of the Northeast <laughs> and adopt other environmental causes like um, urban flooding and tree preservation. Obviously, we've had a tree go down locally later, so um, I want to quickly, as soon as I can, write the sequel to the rewilding of Molly McFlynn to include our Sycamore Gap tragedy. What what in Northumberland inspired you to set it here? I think we're always taught as, as writers to write what you know. And one of my lecturers at uni said I wrote with a really good sense of place. Um, and obviously living in Northumberland, I wanted to bring about that wildness, the nature um, that we have on our doorstep. It was a fabulous setting to put it in there. But also, I think you have to write from your own life and, and what, what you've experienced. So here I am living down a muddy lane, experiencing life and lockdown down a muddy lane. Um, one of the sequels I want to write, I'm going to set in Weirdale because I used to live at the very top of Weirdale. I used to work at Killip Lead Mining Centre. So wow. a, a sequel... Um, bringing in the lives and the social history of the Victorian lead miners will be will be good to use. So write what you know and write what you have and write from from where you are. And I hope my love of our wild places in Northumberland comes um, through in the book. Now the launch is coming up. Tell yeah. us a little bit about where it's going to be launched. Sure, um, I'm having a pre-launch party always one for a party, um, and that's going to be in Matthias Winter. Alison has kindly lent me her shop. We're going to push the tables back. Um, I've made a playlist. We'll have a bit of um, music, book banter and some fizz. Um, that people can book. There's not many tickets left for that. That's pretty full. It's, full. it's limited to 50 places, um, but you can go to my own website, suereadwrites.co.uk, to book a ticket for that. It's free. Um, then on launch day itself, on the 28th of October, I'll be in Waterstones in Hexham from 10 o'clock in the morning till 12. Uh, it's nothing formal. It's not one of these sit down jobbies where I'll be asked questions. It's just come in, have a natter, um, buy your copy at Waterstones and get it signed. I'll then have a quick lunch and hop over to Forum Books in Corbridge, where I'll be doing exactly the same signing books so anybody who's Corbridge based I'll be in forum books at two then Kagito books in Hexham are going to have me a little bit later I'll be there on the 18th of November um, for a book site same sort of thing book signing in Anatta but they've also 
um, made the rewilding of Molly McFlynn their young adult book of the month. Fair. So as, as well as the um, book launch events, there, there are going to be other events locally. Um, I used to be the, known as the Woolly Peddler and people people might know me from when I used to stand at Hexham Christmas Market with a stall full of upcycled woolly goodies. Well, I'm going to go back to my old Woolly Peddler haunts. Um, I've got such a lovely following on social media. I'm so grateful to people for sticking with me and, and carrying on. Um, but I'm going to be at, um, let me have a think. I'm going to be at Errington Ray Pottery for their um, event, which I haven't put on my calendar, so I can't tell you what it is. I'm going to be at Alston at the Craft Fair, 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th of November. And I'll be back in Hexham at the Christmas Market on the 9th of December, upstairs in the rooms upstairs from the Abbey that no one seems to be able to find when it's the Christmas market. Um, I'll be there signing books and um, chatting to people. A busy time ahead then, an exciting time, you know, launching your first novel. It's very exciting. It, re it really, really is. It was something I've always wanted to do. Um, as a small child, I would stitch bits of paper together with a big darning needle and make up my own books. And it it's a personal promise I had to myself that I would or I would be a writer, inverted commas, by the time I was 60. So wow. 61 and, and I've done it. Well done. I've got Congratulations. A book. Sure, yes. Thank somebody you. yesterday suggested um she the lady, somebody left a review on um, my publisher's website on the Book Guild website, and she said, Oh, I'd love to have a recipe book with all of Nan's recipes in it. And I just said, Ah, oh, do you know what a great idea? Because I have another website and a whole other thing that's called the Bridge Cottage Way where I write about seasonal eating and growing veg and pickling and preserving. But I, I wasn't happy with the Bridge Cottage Way, as it's known. It sounds a bit like a, a cult, and it also fits <laughs> to, to where I live, so that's not the good idea. But I just thought, oh, wouldn't that be a great idea? It's Nanny Sarah. In the book, we could have a book of Nanny Sarah's recipes of um, herbal remedies, and uh, I've just made a vat of elderberry tonic for chests and things that I think we both could probably do with <laughs> a minute. Um, but yeah, a recipe book, and yes, the series. And just because it's set in the Northeast, you know, doesn't mean it's not of interest all over. I've had orders from people in Australia. I've got a follower in Germany who's, who's ordered a copy. And also, just because it, it's... Bookshops love to give your book a genre. They have to know what genre it is so they know what shelf to put it on. So it's been given the genre of young adult. And yeah, um, and this reviewer said it was great. She said her teenagers weren't into love stories and ponies. Um, this is more of a book with a feminist um, message, a subtle environmental message. Um, but also it's got huge crossover potential. Um, I've got a lot of readers in their 30s, 40s and 50s who who have just got their copies. Couple of two two of them yesterday just said we we don't usually read much, you know, but I couldn't put it down. I've just read three chapters straight off. So um I'm hoping it's got appeal for young adults and old, but I would say it's recommended age 13 and above. Yeah. It's a bit spicy in places. <laughs> Well, Sue, it's been lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much for talking to Hexham TV. And um, best of luck with the book launch and all the events that you've got coming up. And Thank you. Uh, it'll be great to um, talk to you again, perhaps um, when when you have your next novel. Yeah, sure. That would be great. I'd love to talk. Um, if anyone wants to follow any more, I'm Sue Reed Writes everywhere. Um, website, if you go to the website, you can order a signed copy. I'll send it out to you or pop into your local independent bookshops and, and order there and hope to see people at the book launch. It'd be fabulous to see people. All the best, Lou. Thank you very much. Cheers, Pete. Thank you. Bye. Bye.